The state of trust is um, very much depressed from last year, um, in particular in the United States, uh, but uh, we also see a tremendous drop in trust in business, uh, in particular, um, as a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, and I think that the events of the last 12 months, um, the eventual demise of investment banks, the uh, real problems um, in, in food supply in China, um, in India with the scandal, the Ponzi scheme with Mr. Madoff in the United States. So we've had several events that have caused people to, to lose trust. And interesting thing is for the first time, trust is not just a pot. Um, in fact, trust in government also declined, trust in media, uh, trust in NGOs even. Um, so um, in fact, it wasn't even a zero-sum game. Trust in everything declined. Um, so people are just generally skeptical and nervous. I think the regaining of trust is going to be a long, steady climb back up the hill. Um, remember that in 2001, 2002, with the scandals like Global Crossing, Enron, et cetera, um, business really um, fell in esteem. Uh, I think that the gradual six-year climb has all been lost in one year. Um, but how to regain trust? I think it's a function both of policy as well as communication, that companies have to behave differently, specifically on executive compensation and bonuses. Um, also, I think that uh, they have to take seriously uh, the idea of being private sector diplomats. In other words, working collectively with civil society and government to come up with solutions as opposed to having sort of silos and fighting. People aren't interested. They're interested in solutions. Um, I also believe that as communicators, um, we have to behave differently, which is to say, not just relying on the chief executive as the sole voice. We have to empower employees and uh, also uh, active uh, supporters of brands with information about the companies so that they can speak authoritatively as well. Because it takes up to five times for someone to achieve belief. Um, you have to have an exposure to a message three to five times now, given the current level of skepticism. There is mass communication. Um, I think that that's still, mainstream media is still the fundamental part of a public relations process. But today, the dispersion of authority requires you to also um, speak to bloggers, um, to speak to, um, in fact, employees so that they, when they're speaking to peers uh, in, in social networks, are informed. The new mantra is inform the conversation. You cannot control the message. Um, as much as you can feed good content, substantive um, material to those publics. Public engagement is a concept that applies both to um, corporations as well as to um, the, the public sector to government. And in this, um, a institution is prepared to take on serious change, to behave differently but also to communicate differently. Um, it requires a democratization and decentralization. It requires a commitment to informing the conversation, not just controlling the message. It means that you play both on the so-called authority axis, where you can actually speak to um, your target audiences, but you also have to share information so that they can speak among themselves in a horizontal fashion, in a peer-to-peer -peer way. Because a person like yourself or a fellow employee, colleagues, uh, are a critical part of the conversation. So, in fact, it's talking to the new influencers as well as the establishment. It's talking to the classic experts who are teachers, uh, professors, doctors, but also talking to the blogger who may have diabetes and has an audience of 10,000 um, in a month, um, but is also feeding them into the mainstream media.